Hello all, my name is Krishnag and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are basically going to see what is a boosting technique and we are going to see the first algorithm which is called as ADA boost algorithm. In my previous video, I have already shown you how a bagging techniques actually work and I have also taken an example of random forest classifier and regression. So let's go ahead and try to understand what is boosting. Now let us understand how boosting techniques work. Now let us consider that this is our data set. Now what we do is that we create base learners sequentially. So first of all, initially some of these particular records will get passed to this particular base learner and this base learner may be any models right now. Now once it is trained, okay, after training what we will do is that we will pass all these records and we will see how this particular model has basically performed. Now suppose consider that this record, this record and this record was were incorrectly classified, were incorrectly classified, right? So what will happen now? If it is incorrectly classified, the next model that is created sequentially, only this records will get passed to the next model, which is basically created sequentially, which is my base learner two. Okay. So when this particular record is passed to the base learner two, that basically means most of this particular record will get trained with respect to this particular base learner. And then simultaneously, suppose this particular base learner has given some more wrong records like this over here, then this will be error will get passed to the next base learner and this will be pro and this will be going on continuously. So this is my base learner three. This will be going on continuously and it will go on unless and until we specify some number of base learners that we want to create. And this is the process of how a boosting technique works. Now, but, but when we discuss about ADA boost, ADA boost is a little bit different. There is something called as weights will get assigned over here and that we are going to discuss right now. So let us begin the discussion regarding ADA boost. Let us take an example. Suppose in our data set, I have features F1, F2, F3 and one output. Okay. So suppose I have multiple data sets like this. So suppose consider that I have seven records. Okay. I have seven records. So in the first step, what will happen is that this all records will get some sample weight. So I'm going to create another column, which is called as sample weight. Now, why we require this sample weight? I'll just tell you in a while. So initially, in order to assign the sample weight, the formula basically is applied. W is equal to one by N. Now, when I say W is equal to one by N, this is nothing but N is nothing but the number of records. So I basically have one by seven. Initially, all the records are basically assigned the same weights. Okay, all the records are basically assigned the same weights. Now, this was about step one. In the step two, what we do is that we create our first base learner, which we need to create sequentially. So our first base learner, we will be creating with the help of decision trees in ADA Boost. Over here, all the base learners are decision trees. Now, when we are talking about decision trees, it is not like how we created decision trees in a random forest. Instead, over here, the decision tree is just created with the help of only one depth. These decision trees are basically called as stumps. So whenever you consider that if a decision tree is just having one depth with two leaf node or it may be having many number of leaf nodes, these are basically called as stumps. Now what we do is that we consider F1 and we create one stump. Then we consider F2, then we create an another stump. For each and every feature, we will be creating this stump. Okay. So and finally for F3 also, we create this particular stump. But from this particular stump, I have to first select my first decision tree base learner model. Okay. And how do I select it? We have two properties called as entropy. Entropy or Gini coefficient, we can use both of them. If the entropy is less for this particular stump, then we are basically going to select this particular decision tree as my base learning model for the first sequential base learning model itself. So similarly, I'll compare the entropy of F1 of this particular stump 1, stump 2, stump 3, whichever will be having the lesser one, I'll be selecting that decision tree as my base learner model. Now in the second step, suppose this is my selected stump that I had and suppose this has co correctly classified four records, okay, and incorrectly uh, classified only one record, okay. So suppose it has correctly classified four records and incorrectly classified as one record. How it is basically classifying my output basically has yes or no. I'm just considering a binary classification over here. Okay. So suppose it has correctly classified four classification correctly and one incorrect classification. Then what we have to do is that for this incorrect classification, we have to find out the total error. Okay. How do we find out the total error that we will check? 
So suppose this particular record has been incorrectly classified. Okay, so we calculate the total error, total error by summing up all the sample weights. So in this case, I just have one error. So my sample total error will basically be one by seven. Now this is your second step where we have actually calculated total error. Now in the step three, what we do is that we try to find out the performance of the stump. That basically means how the stump has basically classified. In order to do that, we have a formula called as one by two log to the base E one minus total error divided by total error. So what we are going to do is that we are going to take this total error. Okay. So once I take this total error, it will be log of base E one divided by one by seven divided by one by seven. So this will nothing be, it will be one by log E to the base six. Okay. So log of E multiplied by base six. So this particular value will be somewhere around 0.896. Okay. So this is how you calculate the performance of the stump. Now you must be thinking, why did I calculate total error and this performance of stump? That is because we need to update this weight. As I told you in the boosting technique, what happens is that only the wrong records from this particular decision tree one or the stump one will be passed to the next decision tree or the next stump. So for that, what I have to do is that I have to increase the weights of the wrong classified records, whereas I have to decrease the weights for the correctly classified records. Now in the fourth step, we need to update the weights. We know that our performance of that particular stump is 0.895. So what we are going to do is that based on this particular performance, we are going to update the weights. Now for updating the weights, there are two simple formulas. First of all, we'll try to update the incorrectly classified points. So in order to update the weights of the incorrectly classified records, what we are going to do is that we will be using a very simple formula. The formula can be basically given by new sample weight is equal to old weight multiplied by e to the power of performance say. Now performance say is basically this particular value. Now what we do is that we know our what is our previous sample weight. So we have 1 by 7 multiplied by e to the power of 0.895. Right? The output is 0.349 and you can also calculate with the help of calculator. Now just understand guys, this is this formula is basically to update the weight of the incorrectly classified point. So over here, initially my weight was one by seven. Now you can observe that your initial weight was one by seven. Now it has got updated to 0.349, which is basically increased, right? So this is the formula for updating the incorrectly classified points. But for updating the correctly classified points, we just have to make a simple change in the formula. And the formula will just be e to the power of minus performance say. And when we do the same formula for this, here when I get minus uh, 0.895, this output is basically 0.05. That's it. So you can understand that now my updated weights look like 0 0.05, 0 0.349, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05 and so on. So I hope these are seven records. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Now this is the step where we have actually found out our updated weights for this particular record. But we should observe one more thing guys that when I do the submission of all this particular weight, the total value is not one. But in the case of sample weight, when I did the submission of all these values, we usually get one. So for this, what we do is that we divide by a number, which is the submission of all these values. So if I do the submission of all these values, it will somewhere come around approximately 0.68. Okay, now when I actually divide all these values with the help of 0.68, that time we'll basically be getting our normalized values. Now, when we divide by 0.68, we will basically get our normalized weight. Now, suppose I divided 0 0.05 by 0 0.68, I'm getting 0 0.07. Similarly, when I'm dividing 0 0.349 with 0 0.68, I'm getting 0 0.1513. And similarly, all these values will get populated. Here, I'll again get 0 0.07, 0 0.07, 0 0.07 and similarly 0 0.07 over here. And when I do the submission of all these values, that value will be equal to one. Now, what will be the next step? We'll discuss about it. Now I have removed the sample weight and the updated weight. And instead of that, I've just taken the normalized weights. Now, considering this normalized weight, what we will do is that in our next step, we will create a new data set. And that data set based on this particular updated values will most probably select the wrong records for its training purpose. So whenever we create our second decision tree, which is basically my stump. 
So, so let us understand how do we create that new data set itself. So I, what I'll do is that I will take the same data set, a new data set, F1, F2, F3, and this is basically my output. Now what will happen is that based on this normalized weight, we will try to divide this into buckets. So the first bucket will be 0 0.00 to 0 to 0 0.007. And then this will be from 0 0.07 to point. Now, if I add 0 0.07 to this particular value, it will be somewhere around 0.58. And similarly, this will be continuing on 0.58 to 0.65, then 0.65 to 0.72. And similarly, it will go on. Now, after that, what it will do is that our algorithm will run eight iterations to select different different records from this particular older data set. So suppose for in the first iteration, it has selected a random value of 0.43. Then it will go and see which bucket it falls into. Suppose it falls into this bucket, the wrong record. Understand guys, this was my wrong record, right? Which, which was incorrectly classified my, by decision tree one. So what I'll do is that I'll select this record, I'll populate it over here. Okay, then again for the second iteration, suppose I got selected as 0.31. Now I'll go and see where does 0 0.31 fall into the bucket and again it falls into this particular bucket where my wrong when my record was actually uh, classified incorrectly. So I'm going to take this particular record again and similarly this will be going on. Okay. Now the probability when all these eight records will be getting selected most of the time the wrong record will also get selected. Now this is our new data set that I have. Now based on this particular new data set I will create my new decision tree stump. Now, when I'm creating the new decision tree stump, again, it will use F1, create a separate stump, F2, create a separate stump, F3, create the separate stump, and then based on the entropy, select which entropy is very, very less for which decision tree stump, it will go and select that. And again, the same process will be continuing. Suppose from that decision tree, we found out again, two records have been incorrectly classified. So what will happen? Again, this normalized weight will be getting updated. Suppose it has identified this, suppose this record has got incorrectly classified. Then all the steps will again restart where we had updated this weight. First of all, we'll go and find out what is the total error. Then we'll be trying to find out how the model has actually performed. That is basically my performance say of the second decision tree stump. And simultaneously, the whole process will be going on again and again. And after that, you'll also be seeing that after we calculate the total error and performance say, the error weights will also get updated, which is my normalized weight that will also get updated. And after updation, again, it will be normalized. So that process will be continuing on unless and until it passes through all the sequential decision trees. And finally, you'll be considering that there will be a less error when compared to this normalized weight that we had in the initial stages. Now, suppose with respect to our data set, we had constructed decision tree one, decision tree two, decision tree three, which are my basically my stumps in sequential manner. And how for the test data, the classification will happen, you know? So suppose I have a test data set, it will get passed to this particular record. And suppose this is a binary classification. Suppose this gives us one, this gives us zero, this gives us one. Again, you know that as random forest, how the majority vote basically happens. Similarly, in Ada Bush, the majority vote basically happens between the stumps. Now, in short, over here, you can see that we are combining weak learners. We are combining weak learners and we are actually making it as a strong learner. Okay. And when multiple weak learners combines, they become a strong learner in short. Now, this is all about this particular video. And I hope you understood what is Ada Bush techniques. Understand all the steps. The weight updation is the majority step that will basically happen. In my next video, I'll be explaining about gradient boosting technique. I hope you like this particular video. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you have not already subscribed, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Thank you one and all.